What's going on there everybody and welcome to a brand new series. We are jumping into Rama World of Shipping and this is where we're at. I, I want to disclose here because this is, this is very interesting to me. This is the first game that I am trying on Amazon Games uh, own store and I can tell you this right off the bat. I am disappointed <laughs> not in the game at the moment but with amazon games and that is because you can see here my version as of this a very first recording is 1.10.1 the steam version is already at 1.10.2 and that was roughly a week and a half ago that they had gotten that update so i am already missing some new features and uh we'll, we'll talk about them as we go I hope this isn't a trend that ha that continues to happen. I hope that the Amazon Games version does get updates. Uh, I know they're working on a update 2.0, and I will be very disappointed if that does not come, uh, which would then have to make me rethink this whole series uh, and probably starting all over potentially on on Steam. So we'll see what happens there. But I just wanted to disclose that because I don't know if that's a thing with all Amazon games that when you use the Amazon Games launcher. Or if it just happens to be this one in particular. But just something there to disclose. So here we are. Anyhow, and now in Seorama, you, know, you can see what the interface looks like. You can already tell that quality wise, it's not I don't like I don't want to say it's bad, but there's definitely some things where it's just like it just doesn't look crisp, right? Like coming from Transocean, Transocean 2, looking for a little bit more crispness. And I, I like what we see here, but I'm not 100% convinced that that's what we're going to see in-game. So, you can see the modes that we currently have. Uh, we can play against other AI companies, or we can play solo without any limitations. I think both could be really cool. Kind of like sandbox mode versus like campaign. Uh, very basically UI though, right? We got exit, we've got the load to load our saves. We have our settings, and then we have a tutorial. You can see by the settings though, very minimalistic. We cannot change much. I can't change between full screen exclusive. I can't change from windowed, you know, I can, can't change from, you know, full screen with border or without border, Like we just, we can't change anything. And so that's annoying. Like all the settings are just right here. We can do a, a frame cap, but like to me, I, I, I don't care about that. So that is, uh, that's a little concerning. I don't think if you have a, you know lower quality pc that, that you won't be able to play this i think you'll be able to it's not a very heavy lift of a game uh from what i could tell and what i can see graphic wise i don't think it is either so i think you should be fine if you want to just dip your feet into something new that uh is is world of shipping but we're gonna jump in we're gonna start with the tutorial just kind of see what this is all about and then we're gonna go from there uh we're probably gonna jump in with other ai companies as well for our mode just to kind of keep things going but to start out this series is going to definitely be the tutorial just to understand what the game is about what the new concepts are because it does differ from Transocean and Transocean 2 uh, in many aspects so it's definitely good to kind of understand what those aspects are so that way we know what we're getting ourselves into when we actually get into one of the official modes so let's hop into the tutorial and see what they have in store for us all right, welcome to CO Rama World of Shipping. My job is to guide you through your first steps to becoming the best shipping maritime company in the world. Oh, well, who are you? First things first, choose a port to be the base of your operations. All your new ships will begin at that port. It wants us to pick the port of Dakar as our starting port. Um, I'm kind of curious. Oh, we got Canada, LA. Oh, for a minute there, I was looking at the map wrong. <laughs> I was like, hmm. I, I was, yeah. Okay, yeah. Because I was like, why wouldn't that be New York? But yeah, New York's here. New Orleans, Savannah. Uh, Tampa, and then Houston. I'm surprised we don't have, like, New Orleans. I think Transocean had New Orleans. Uh, but, yeah, you could kind of see all the different areas that we got. We got Australia here. Um, Yeah, just a lot of stuff you can kind of just see right off the bat that we have. So, pick the port of the car. You got it. And here we are already, our first kind of look at the ships that we have. 
Here you can customize your ship by changing its colors and part designs. The colors can always be changed later at a shipyard through the upgrade menu, but the design is permanent. Interesting. When you finish the customization, click the buy ship button on the right of the screen. So we got ourselves a, uh, we can't really do anything with this one. I guess we could. Uh, yeah, it is going to let us change some things here. Okay, cool. So we can do customization. Uh, let's see. That's the front. We can see it from the middle. And there we are from the back. It's just, hmm. It's just, it's a very unique, right? It's just, uh, the ocean looks good. <laughs> All right, so we can change the bottom of the hull. And uh, we got black right now, which we can't really tell from that angle, but we can kind of see over here. Uh, green definitely does not suit it. Blue, no. I, I think black is fine. And then we've got the deck, which is kind of a gray deck. Um, we're probably going to switch it to white, right? Uh, so the reason for that, I, uh, in my opinion, is we want to deflect the sun, right? We don't want our workers being all hot when when up on deck, uh, checking the holds and whatnot. Uh, details one, details two. It doesn't really tell us what that is. Oh, interesting. Hmm. So it's kind of like the mast, the, oh, the ship itself where it houses the true quarters and whatnot. It's just, hmm, not, this one's the anchor. Okay. Well, the anchor makes sense. We'll give it a gray, dark gray. What is details three? interesting all of that stuff um hmm all right we'll give it a light grayish then we got the upper hall which is the the beef of the ship here which yeah blue just i mean the colors just look they look like crayola color crayons to be honest uh the red one does look probably the best um but anyhow lots of options so i guess that's always good right like we, we like options Options are good. So we customized our ship. We can see all the things that we can customize, the views that you can change. And yeah, it's just, I wonder what, what are the lifeboats? Those are probably white, right? Yeah, they definitely are considered white. No? Hmm. Details one, maybe? Maybe they're not part of the detail package. Hmm. They might not be part of the detail package because they're white. And there's no other thing that's white besides the deck. So, yeah, interesting. Okay, let's buy the ship. It's free. It's a bulk carrier. It's the Panamax bulk carrier. The type is bulk carrier. 234 meters. It's got a max speed of 21 knots. It can store up to 60,000 tons. And it has a fuel capacity of 734 tons. Nice dry dock, though. I like that it's in dry dock. That's kind of cool. All right, let's buy the ship and see what we got next. All right, this is the main game screen. From here, you can navigate to every window. Let's take a quick tour. Yes, let's do it. From here, you can access all the available windows, operations, crew, contracts, finances, and accounts, global economy, purchase companies, events, and bank. I told you, there's a lot to this, which is super amazing. What is this thing doing? Oh, it's pointing us. Um, so yeah, here is the list of all your available ships, their names, and their status. You can assign a color to each ship by clicking the colored circle and see the route line by clicking the eye icon. You can go into the 3D view by clicking the ship icon. Hmm. Okay. It's like, hey, just look. Okay, so whatever. Just We can't click anything. It just wants us to look. Uh, here is the basic information about your company. The name, the available money, the company's reputation, and the ranking points gathered. Interesting. What? I, uh, which? Oh, that's the rank. That's the money. I don't know what the A is for. Maybe it's our grade. The current in-game date and the buttons are used to adjust the speed of the in-game clock. Look at that. January 1st of 2024. This game has only been out for two months now. Not even two months yet. So yeah, very still very fresh. Uh, buttons to activate and deactivate information you see on the map and on the screen are over here. Um, so that's nice. What we got like bugs over here? What is that? Like we got infestation on our ship? Unbelievable. This is the summary of all the ongoing world events. By clicking it, you can access the events window. Uh, so that's probably good. 
The world events is neat. Uh, Transition 2 had something a little bit similar as well. So that is cool. Uh, all right, let's continue by filling the crew member slots on your ship. So this is different. Uh, we didn't have to worry about filling up any crew on our ship, which this brings me to the first thing that the 1.10.2 update offers that we do not have in the 1.10.1 version, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but every potential crew member has a maximum level represented by empty stars and the current level represented by golden stars. As you increase your company's reputation in the game, more experienced crew members will become available. That's good, right? We want Captain Smith. All right, first, as long as you keep the same crew members, they will level up. That will happen when they complete 365 days on of working on the ship. That's a long time. I don't think... To complete 365 days of working on a ship, you would probably have to work for two years, right? Like, you're not going to spend 365 days on a ship in one whole year, like, straight, right? Like, that just isn't happening. Nobody does that. That'd be insane. Do you imagine your mental health? Anyhow, that will happen when they, yep, be aware that some ship events may cause your cruise members to lose some experience points. Listen, no fraternizing on this ship, okay? We ain't doing it. All right, the quality of the CVs that each ship receives also depends on the morale of the ship. Morale is a metric that cares about the company's reputation, the overall condition of the ship, the ship's age, the installed upgrades on the ship, and the amount spent monthly on the quality of living section. The morale of a ship can be found in the crew section of the operations window. Yeah, so you can already see how much this is already drastically different from the Transocean series because we are going very in-depth on crew management in this one. This is very management heavy. Uh, the captain's position is pre-selected. You can choose one of the available CVs in the bottom section. Do the same for all the other positions. Wonderful. Okay, so the captain's position is pre-selected. You can choose one of the available CVs. All right, who do we want? We got a lot of people, all right? Monica Lindquist, we got you. Vaughn Popov, Wapen Yang, Yang, Emmanuel Musa, and Mahmuda El Jabara. They're all about the same age, roughly, right? In their early 30s. Uh, a pretty decent mix uh, of people. You can see what countries they're from, which is really cool, nationality wise. Um, these two have the most, and they're not even that more like six years of experience and they're only like a few hundred dollars more 200 dollars more than these guys um so let's go emmanuel uh i, I think it'll be good Ooh, how oh, man if we look at this if we want him for 12 months he's cheaper interesting um we'll take you for 12 right you get a year year long deal here and we auto rehire interesting so after you're 12 uh the ship just auto rehires cool do the same thing for the other positions so here is where i'm going to talk about if you don't have the 1.10.2 update and you're stuck on 1.10.1 like i am for whatever crazy reason that amazon games cannot get the latest update is if you want to get a second ship and you want to reassign this captain from our current ship to the other ship, we have to fire him and rehire him. We can't put him into like a little hold and then just move him over to the other ship. Uh, that has been implemented though with the 1.10.2 update. So if you have that, congratulations, you are on your way to doing great things. But anyhow, so that's the, one of the big features that we're currently missing. Uh, let's go with the chief mate here. Uh, same thing. So we got a different group of people. Uh, wow. This one's a little bit more spread out here. Uh, I don't really Egyptian, Lithuanian, Mozambican, Libyan, Israeli. Um, interesting. Very interesting. I think it's going to be a very dynamic crew. One year of experience. I mean, we have tons of money. I'm not worried about the money. All right, we'll put you on a 12 month as well. And, and like, like I said, going to the 12 month seems to reduce that uh, that cost. Our chief engineer. Yes, this is very important because if the pirates attack, it is on you to do your thing. All right. 
I want Ivorian, Algerian, Angolan, Filipino, and Israeli again. Uh, let's see. I, I mean, to me, it doesn't really... Man, 9,200 for three years experience. That's not too bad. Kind of go middle of the road on this one, even though they're very crucial. Very crucial. The Electro Technical Officer. What is this guy? Responsible for the maintenance and repair of all the electrical and electronic equipment on board the ship. An experienced Electro Technical Officer will save you time if an event of such type occurs. Interesting. Um, yeah, we already know. What, what does the Chief Mate do, though? Second in command, mainly responsible for the ships during a voyage. A more experienced chief mate will minimize the percentage of negative events. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, let's see. Vietnamese, Sengalese, Panamanian, Cameroonian, Cameroonian. Oh, I have a couple of Cameroonians here. And they're all the same price. They all have one year of experience. So it really doesn't matter in this instance. They're all roughly the same age. Um, welcome to the team. And we have the chief steward who is in charge of the food and cleaning departments on the ship. Um, yeah, so that's good for ship morale, which is very important. So because of that, I want somebody with some experience. So we're going to take Hamid Filali, uh, who really is not that expensive either. So there we go. Now that the ship is operational, we have to acquire some contracts to execute. So yeah, that is the first main big thing right there. That's totally different. Um, from Transocean. In Transocean, we'd buy the ship and bam, let's go get the cargo and go. But let's check out the contracts and see what we got here. When you open the contracts window, you will always find the contracts available in the port of the selected ship. So for us, it is uh, with Dakar, right? Yeah, the port of Dakar. The goal here is to acquire as many contracts as you can without passing the expired date of the contract. This will result in a monetary penalty for each day after the expiration. Um, interesting. You can chain the contracts by acquiring one from this port and the next one from the destination port. Each contract rewards you ranking points, which is the requirement for victory in competitive mode. Ooh, competitive mode. Now we talked about the two modes, right? It had AI and non-AI, but now they talk about, they refer to it as competitive mode. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Anyhow, longer term contracts generally grant you more points. Some ports require that your ship is of a particular eco rating. Keep that in mind. Oh, I am. I am definitely keeping that in mind. You can change the ports to look for other contracts using the change port option. Okay. You may notice that some contracts have a calendar symbol next to them. These are charter contracts. When you acquire a charter contract, you will lease your ship to another company for a period of time. A hundred or 80 or 360 days for a fixed amount per day. You will not be charged any operational expenses for this period of time. When the charter contract is finished, the amount will be added to your balance and the ship will be fully operational again at your service. That's kind of cool. I like that. It's time to acquire some contracts. Choose the contract from Dakar to Itaki and click the acquire button. So here we are. Um, so we've got the port of Itaki and we've got the port of Nagui, Nagoya. Uh, we can see what we're carrying here, the distance, the flat fee, and here's our expiration. Uh, so, and this is the duration. So we know that doing this uh, would take 18 days or nine days to get there, but the contract expires in 18 days. So if we were to fall outside of that, we'd probably would pay the penalty. Um, yeah, bad eco rating though. That's not very good. Uh, and we only get two points out of this one. But anyhow, they're telling us to acquire it. So that is what we will do. So there we are. We're going from here to here. So blue is the start and yellowish is the, the end. Um, so yeah. With that, 433,000 is what we're going to get out of that. That's nice. Nice. It's solid. It's solid. So we'll acquire that. Now that the ship has a contract, we have to review the ship's details and start the contract's execution. All right. In the operations window, you can find all the details regarding your ships and their schedule. All right. In the fleet section, you have a list of all your ships, those which are active and those which are ordered and expected to be delivered soon. So, you're so that sounds like when you order a ship, you don't get it right away. So we have to wait. So you got to kind of think ahead, uh, which is very interesting. 
Uh, all right, so that's cool. Inside the box is a small piece of information so that you know what every ship is doing at a glance. Uh, where's this information? Uh, okay, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it's just these boxes it's referring to. Any ship that you have put up for sale or auction will not be visible in the list. Okay. The contracts section is one of the most important. Here you can find all the contracts that have been acquired for the ship along with all their details. You have to arrange them in a certain order so no contract will expire and find the optimal route for your ship. Yes, that is very key. Two more options are also available. The stop on port option will hold the ship at the destination port if it is enabled and require you to act so that the trip is continued. Um, this is a very good feature. Uh, Transocean 2 implemented this and it was very heavily requested by the community. I don't think it launched with it, uh, but they ended up launch, uh, putting it in super key because think about it, right? When we're traveling with our ship, we could get to a destination port and there could be additional contracts to one of the ports that we're going to next that we want to take on. If the game does not stop so that way it notifies us of that situation, we could be losing out on very, I won't say a ton of revenue, but there is a revenue loss potentially there. So they're very nice to have. So that will definitely be enabled. Um, but yeah, unless you can have it so the crew can make, like determine those things. I would like to, like that would be kind of cool too, but we'll see what happens. The remove option is used when you want to cancel one of the re acquired contracts for any reason. Doing so will result in a penalty fee equal to 20% of its price, plus some delay if for some reason the contract has expired. You can never remove a contract when you have started it. Oh, that's good to know. You can use the blue arrow in the top right of the contracts window to navigate to the contracts window of the port. In the speed section, you can set the speed of that ship at any given time. Though be careful because with the higher speed, while you may finish your contracts early, you may have a negative impact on the environment. A higher average speed results in a worse eco rating for the ship. Our ship already has a bad eco rating for this trip. I think of it, had it classified us as a, as a D. I'm pretty sure it was a D. So we don't, yeah, not good. Uh, in the fuel section is the fuel tank, how much fuel your ship can hold, the current consumption, the percentage remaining in the tank, and the option to buy fuel when in a port. Um, so yeah, that's, that's good. Some events that happen during trips cause damage to the engine and the hull of the ship. In this section, you can see the overall condition of these parts and can decide to repair them if necessary. If these are at a low percentage, it will affect fuel consumption and the durability of the ship even more, causing more damage and more negative effects events in the process. The engine can be repaired at any port available, but the hull can only be repaired at a shipyard. That's good to know because that is really critical because shipyards are probably only in certain regions. In the logbook and quality of living section, you can do two things. First, you have the ship's logbook. Here you can find information about the trips and events that occurred during those trips. In the quality of living section, you can adjust some of the basic expenses for the ship. The expenses are mostly crew and effect the expenses are monthly and affect the moral morale of the ship's crew. All right. All right. In the crew section, you have a mini representation of the crew members and the morale of the ship. Interesting. It's a weird design, but it is what it is. A useful tool move to port is necessary when a ship has reached a port that has no contracts for our type of ship or contracts that you like. That is kind of convenient. I do like that. That's nice. You can choose a port from the list and click add to queue. A virtual contract will appear on your list. You can now click start contract and the ship will travel to the selected port. All right, now that I kind of got my throat cleared out, in this window, you have the option to customize and upgrade your ship. And uh, yeah, click the start button to start the contract. All right, so we don't need to change anything. Everything looks great. I wonder if you can, I would assume you can access the screen at any time that you don't have to be at a port to, to access it, but I don't know. Advanced, we can't click advanced. It didn't tell us what was in advanced. Oh no, okay, whatever, start the contract. Contract in progress, close the operations window and use double time speed to speed up the day clock. All right, we close that out. 
and uh, double speed. When the ship arrives at the destination and fully unloads the cargo, pause the time by clicking the pause time button next to the date. Yep. All right, so here we are. This is what we got going on. Uh, here is our little key. LNG port. That's kind of good to know. That's very big right now, LNG uh, stuff. LNG shipyard. Apparently, they're different. Interesting for the shipyards that they can go to. Uh, ports that are closed. And uh, it looks like only the Sri Lanka port is closed. What are the events? It doesn't really tell us. Uh oh, I clicked something when the ship arrived. Yep. Okay. There's a storm over there. That's cool. kind of cool. Yeah, I couldn't click on these. It just just beeps at me. Don't know what they are. Anyhow, let's speed up the time even more because our ship's just crossing the ocean. Uh, we can see what's kind of going on. There's a lot of areas that we can click into, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, there's a storm over there. That's kind of bad. Uh, that's yeah. I like that it kind of tells you where the storm is. I wonder if we could redirect the uh, the route, right? Like if the storm's here, could we go up to like this grid and then around? Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, when the ship arrives, though, we got to pause the time. And uh, yeah. I don't know why it wouldn't do it automatically, though, right? Like that's the setting we have. All right. The Panamax has arrived. Okay. You have now completed your first contract. Yes. Yes, we have. We did it. We did it. All right. The money from the contract has gone into your account. Yes, it has. I can see that. And the company's reputation has gone up. Uh, the eco rating has remained unchanged. And you have gathered some ranking points. One step closer to victory. Victory. Anyhow, since you finished your first contract, it's time to review your company's finances. All right. We shall review those finances. Yes, we shall. All right. Here we are. Here you can find financial information about your company throughout the year and calculate income and expenses. Here you can find information about the trips of your company ships with details about income penalties and the history of their trips. This is how your company was doing financially. Let's find out how the rest of the world is doing. Uh, so yeah, that's cool. We don't really have much data. Uh, in the global economy window, you can find information about the ongoing world economy and how it is translated into the average price of a contract and the number of available contracts for each of the three main categories of ships. Now that you have some money, it is a good time to buy your second ship and grow the company. Nice. All right. We're growing the company. Yes, we are. Our bulk carrier is not doing so great down 4%. Anyhow, they want us to buy another ship. So this is the purchase window here. You can buy, sell or scrap ships. The first option is to purchase a new ship. All right. So yeah, there's our new, our options. Yep. Now choose a container ship. Oh yeah. We like containers. They look so nice on here. All right. The first step is to customize the new ship. You can choose from your number. Yes. After finalizing customization, you have the option to buy the ship by paying the full amount right now or by taking a bank loan. Oh, that's kind of cool. If you choose to pay the full amount, your order will proceed and the ship will believe, be delivered to your home port after the mentioned days. So yeah, this is where it's like, it's not right away. They got to build it. So choose to get a bank loan to buy the ship because it's 35 million. And I guess we could have paid for it outright, but uh, wouldn't been smart. This is the bank loan window. Based on the bank reputation points that you have earned, you can take different types of loans. A higher reputation gives you more choice in the loans percentage and number of installments. The chosen options are 50% of the price with 48 installments. Click accept and confirm the loan. Okay. So we can't really do anything. That's what we got our option wise, but you can kind of see already uh, what percent of the loan we want and the number of installments that we kind of want to go for. It kind of varies there from two years all the way up to a battle with math, but I believe that's seven years right there. So uh, yeah, that is what we got there. All right. We accepted it. Do you want to take the loan with specific options regarding payment? Thank you for giving this warning, but yes, I do. Congratulations. You're the proud owner of the new Panamax container. The ship will be delivered at the port of Rotterdam 
in 30 days. Why to the port of Rotterdam, though? Like, we don't... Ah, whatever. I didn't know we... I guess we don't pick, like, a home base, but I thought we did. But anyhow, now let's go back to the purchase menu. Here we are. Now, let's try to buy a used ship. Okay. And interesting, we have a load screen for a used ship. Oh, uh, anyhow. In the available ships list, we can see all the ships that are, are available at the time. They can be of any type, size, and condition. Under the details section of the selected ship, you have the ways in which you can purchase it. These are by paying the full amount today, by bank loan, or by bidding. Not all options are always available. When you bid on a ship, there's a chance that another company may outbid you. So keep that in mind and come back if you get a notice that another, another company has. Now let's go back again and check the last option. Sell a ship. Yes, another load screen. Why? That's so weird. If needed, you can sell one by setting up a selling price, putting it up for auction, or scrapping it and getting back 30% of the ship's value instantly. Interesting. The scrapping part is kind of cool because I could see with age, depending on how old the ship is, it might just be worth scrapping at that point. Uh, but if you decide that you want to cancel a sale or auction, you can use the get ship back button and remove it from the market. All right, we're going to exit the store. Why? All right, let's check out our companies here. In the company's window, you can see the opposing companies when playing in competitive mode. You can check their ranking, details about the company, ship logbooks, about the recent contracts they acquired, and their progress throughout the year. Oh, it just threw me off road for some reason. Almost over. Let's check the global events window. Nice. Okay, we are very close, it says. Have you have a list of all the ongoing global events and most of them have an impact on the world economy and most probably on some of your trips. Each event has values that have an effect and they can be found under the description text inside the red and green bubbles. Wonderful. One final step. Let's check the bank window. In the bank window, you can find all the information about your loans on the loans list on the left. You can see all the loans, whether they're active or not. Also, from here, you can select to enable auto payment for a loan. That means that when the new installment is issued, it will be paid instantly unless there's no money available. Interesting. Okay. Uh, in the details section, you get all the information regarding the selected loan. Yes, I can see it. It's very beautiful. In the installment selection, you have a list from older to newer of each installment of the selected loan interesting and lastly in the top right corner you have the accumulated number of bank reputation points your company has higher bank reputation allows you to take new loans with better conditions many of the titles in the game have a question mark next to them you can always hover over it to be reminded of any information about them the tutorial is now complete and you are now ready to build your own maritime empire good luck wonderful that is just completely wonderful. So that is it. We've now completed the tutorial. We're going to be ready to jump into our own ship. I'm super excited. It's going to be so much fun. And uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a blast. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. And I hope to catch you all next time with some more Seorama when we jump into competitive mode. Uh -huh.